What is up, guys? Welcome for our week two battle of the Global Battle Association. This week we are taking on the Melbourne Rotoms, coached by Cybertron or Aaron Zhang. You guys may know him as a an extremely good VGC player, trying out his hand in the uh, draft league format. He's been here since last season. Uh, he's, he did pretty well last season. Um, his team was was rain though, and it became a little bit predictable. This season with the Ubers, uh, Aaron drafted. A very scary team. Now, before I start with the uh, the team analysis and, and going over his team and whatnot, I just want to apologize first of all uh, for the delay on this video. Uh, I've been extremely busy with um, I'm changing jobs and uh, also with uh, with GBA graphics. I was the one working on uh, pretty much all of the slides for the uh, or all of the uh, the whole PSD for the Twitter recaps. If you guys aren't following the GBA on Twitter, if you want the recaps every week for the kill leaders and the results standings. Uh, then definitely go follow them. The link will be in the description down below. But uh, but yeah, I had to work on all of that, and I kind of got uh, backlogged with quite a few things, and as a result, this uh, video is coming out a lot later than it should have, so I want to apologize to you guys, first of all. Secondly, to the GBA. I'm sure they understand, though, uh, with all the work I've been doing. Uh, but most importantly, to my opponent, to Aaron. Uh, sorry for getting this up so late, dude. Uh, I... Do apologize i would have liked to have it out on the same day as you but that was quite impossible for me um on top of that you guys are going to see another reason why this video took so long i wanted this up like at 5 30 or 6 uh but it's going up a lot later probably around like 11 uh by the time i, I finish up with all the uh, the graphics work and the um and the post editing rendering and whatnot uploading so uh hopefully it's, it's up a little bit earlier let's let's pray but uh but yeah anyway let's hop into the team analysis so <clears throat> Going over my opponent's team, Aaron has uh, Aegislash, uh, Rayquaza, which is scary, uh, Mamoswine, Toxapex, Megalopony, Wobbuffet, Kartana, Gligar, Zerkatry, Magmortar, and Azelf. So, first thing I notice about this team is that it's extremely leaned toward offense, and that's quite scary because Aegislash is a powerhouse, Rayquaza, Megalop, Kartana, Zerkatry. Uh, Mamoswine, they're all extremely difficult to switch into, and if he brings all six of those, for example, uh, then my team doesn't handle that well. He has really good defensive options in Toxapex and Gligar, uh, even Wobbuffet. Wobbuffet's so scary for me because uh, while I do have a ghost uh, that doesn't get trapped by Shadow Tag, there are mons on my team that either can't take really good advantage of Wobbuffet if it comes in on any one of them, or uh like they just they can't damage it enough so they'll get destroyed by like mirror coat encounter so um that's something i'm definitely gonna have to watch out for uh gliger as a defensive option i don't really see coming against my team seeing that i have a, a very good uh ice options in uh tornadoes tease icy wind mega Moils, ice punch needle queens ice beam and whatnot so uh, i don't really see gliger coming um Azelf is a possibility. Uh, it's a very good rocks lead against me, and if he wants to get up rocks to limit my Torn and my uh, Salamence's switch-ins, uh, which are obviously my best options against his Kartana, then uh, that's going to be a little bit problematic, so that's something I have to watch out for. Uh, Aegislash is quite a tricky mod to deal with, uh, seeing that my team has a lot of really good physical attackers that can destroy, but not so many special attackers outside of, like, Necrozma. Um, it, it becomes a little bit difficult, so... Uh, I have to prepare for everything, and that's really not easy. Uh, so, let's go into the team analysis. First mod on the team, as you see on the screen, is Salamence Grandina. Rocking a Rocky Helmet with Flamethrower, Toxic, Roost, and Earthquake. I have 228 speed. This is enough for Zerkatry uh, if it's not Scarfed. So, I'm able to outspeed it, hit it with Earthquake. I need that uh, sort of emergency option against it. Uh, I have 116 HP with 60 defense uh, and a an Impish Nature. This is to be able from full to take Cortana's uh, plus one corkscrew crash uh, because I get off the intimidate obviously I'm able to live it and I'm able to get, either get off a roost or a flamethrower on it effectively getting rid of it uh, toxic is there because I need something to be able to uh, to stall out the Wobbuffet so I can go for toxic and then he doesn't have really good toxic switch-ins outside of Aegislash which doesn't really want to deal with Salamence anyway and I have decent switch-ins to his uh, Aegislash as well as you'll see in a second so pretty much anything else is going to get toxic Toxapex of course being another exception but uh, again I don't really see him bringing too many defensive options against me I think he's going to try to overwhelm me with his offense uh, and then we have uh, Foreign Spadef just tossed in there. Well, the 100 attack is to make sure that I take out Zerkatry uh, as reliably as possible as well. Um, 
because it's going to be, uh, and I'm also doing a little bit more damage to the Tox effects, obviously, uh, as well as the Age of Slash, so I think those are going to be important. Uh, I went with a minus attack nature because Flamethrower is literally only there for the, um, for the Kartana, Kartana, and it's a move that I can go, uh, go with against the Wobbuffet if that does come, uh, and because it's a minus special attack nature because I am impish, I'm going to be doing a lot less damage to it, meaning that its mirror codes are not going to be doing as much. So... Uh, moving on to 49% of the Tornadus Therian. We have Heat Wave, Icy Wind, U-Turn, and Grass Knot. We have 244 HP with 28 defense. This is to make sure that I can uh, take, well, Kartana's hits well, uh, as well as live uh, Mamoswine's Ice Shard after rocks if it's max adamant life orb. Uh, I'm able to take that thanks to my investment. We have 68 in Spatak. This is to make sure that I knock out uh, the amount of swine with a grass knot after it takes rocks damage uh, if it doesn't have any investment. And then we have enough speed on here. 178, I believe, covers uh, Kartana. So I'm able to, uh, to outspeed the Kartana as well. Uh, so that's going to be quite nice. I think I might outspeed Azelf uh, too, but I think I covered uh, Azelf creeping my, uh, my Cobalion, which is the same as Kartana. So that works out there. Assault Vest is obviously to be able to switch into his Aegis Slash because it's it's uh, most spammable move against me is Shadow Ball. Um, seeing that Tyranitar is unlikely to, cut, to come to a matchup with Mamoswine, Megalopony, and Kartana, um, I want to be able to switch into his Shadow Ball a little bit more effectively, and uh, Tornado's Therian is going to be there for that. Heat Wave does a lot to, uh, to Aegis Slash if it's in Blade form, so that's the reason that we're rocking this set. Moving on to Togavor, the Mega Mawile. So I decided to go with a Stealth Rock Swords Dance set because I didn't feel like I needed Sucker Punch in this matchup, mainly because uh, he doesn't have a way to Oko Mega Mawile necessarily. And this is really my mod to take advantage of his Tox Specs and his Wobbuffet uh, and even his Gligar. Like his slower options uh, are really gonna be hindered by Mawile. Uh, uh, and also, I don't want to have a minus two attack drop on his Aegis Slash for free, basically. So that's why I have Swords Dance Rocks, as this is the only rocker that I'm bringing this week. And a lot of his Mons, uh, I need to get rid of potential Sashes, like, for example, his Mamoswine uh, is going to be extremely important. So uh, I feel like Rocks were needed on the set. And then just Stab plus Knock Off, I, I think, covers most of his team. Not too much to say about this Mawile set. I'm um, rocking Minus Speed Nature, because as you'll see in a sec, we are bringing Trick Room. And uh, we have Goat, our Reuniclus, this week with Shadow Ball, Calm Mind, Psychic and a Trick Room, so I don't have Recover. Uh, you guys may have noticed in the Power Rankings videos if you did watch them already, uh, in which case you would know the result of the match, but thank you for coming anyway, but uh, but anyway, um, the, uh, the set does not have Recover on it, mainly because uh, I felt like this was a one-time deal. I'm going to get up Trick Room, I'm going to try to do as much damage as I can. Uh, I am rocking a plus defense nature, but that's mainly because I want to set up Trick Room on his Lopening without it being able to two-hit KO me. Uh, and in case he has investment to live Psychic, for example. And then we have Shadow Ball, Calm Mind, and Trick Room, of course. I need Shadow Ball because otherwise I won't be able to hit Aegis Slash, and this is really something that I feel like his Aegis Slash is going to switch in on. Uh, and then, obviously, to take advantage of the Wobbuffet once again. As you can see, I'm quite worried about Wobbuffet, so uh, I wanted to make sure to have a, uh, an option against it. Once I get a, a couple of Calm Minds, it's very hard for him to break through this, actually. Uh, he pretty much has to sack one to two Mons to, to be able to deal with my Reuniclus, re especially in Trick Room. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's go. Moving on to Bat Signal, our other Trick Roomer. So, we have uh, a lot of bulk. Uh, with Prism Armor, uh, we have 236 HP, 4 in Defense, 4 in Spadef. I have uh, 252 Special Attack, so Max with a uh, Modest Nature. The reason I went Modest and I didn't go uh, Mild, no, it's not Mild, it's, uh, anyway, uh, the uh, the Speed Decreasing Nature, uh, is because I do want, actually want to be faster than his Toxapex uh, outside of Room, uh, as well as a couple of, other, uh, of his other Mons, mainly because... Uh, I don't want to get hazed by the Pex. So I decided to go faster than it outside of room, make sure that it can't just come in and haze me as I go for a Calm Mind, because as you can see, we're Calm Mind, Psychic, Moon, Guys, Beam, and Trick Room. It's a very similar set to Reuniclus. They basically do the same thing. This one has a little more longevity and has the ability to live Shadow Sneak from Aegis Slash as well, thanks to the Casta Berry, uh, as well as potentially take a Shadow Ball. So it's really just setting up Mawile with the Trick Room, essentially. So, yeah, that's that. And uh, last but not least on the team, we have Greg, the Rotom Wash, with Hydro Pump, Thunder Wave, Volt Switch, and Defog. So, <clears throat> idea here is, if he feels like he can bring in things like his Toxapex, or his, uh, like, let's say it's a special Rayquaza, or 
his Lopany with Facade for free on my Rotom. I have Thunder Wave to be able to, to paralyze them. Hydro Pump and Volt Switch are pretty standard here. And I decided to put Defog on Rotom mainly because, of course, we have the Assault Vest on Tornadus. And uh, I have a Rocky Helmet here, and I didn't have room for Defog on, uh, on Salamence. So I decided to put it on Rotom mainly because he does have access to T-Spikes. Uh, which of course only affect one mon on my team, being Necrozma uh, Dawnwings. But uh, I felt like it was worth potentially getting rid of hazards at some point in the game, especially for these two, the two flyers. Um, I think that, uh, that that might come in handy at some point, so I decided to slap on Defog there. Uh, the investment is mainly just to take on uh, Lopany semi-well, but I also have enough speed on here for Mamoswine. Uh, I think Adamant Mamoswine, if I'm not mistaken, and not uh, not Jolly, because Jolly can't really do too much damage to me. But Adamant uh, with a Life Orb, of course, becomes a problem, and that's why we decided to outspeed it. So, that's the team. Moving on into the battle portion now. Um, this is where uh, you guys are going to see why this took me so long uh, to get up. And uh, here we go. So... We have a new layout, a new background, and most importantly, we have Citra quality, as we are now using Citra to uh, to play our battles. So um, this is uh, this was quite a fortunate uh, find. Uh, obviously, uh, everybody knows what Citra is, but uh, it was it was quite nice that I was able to get this up and running. Huge shout outs, by the way, to Aaron, Randy, and uh, Tony for helping me out with this. Um, Randy showed me how to edit the replays so that I could get different battle backgrounds and turn off the music so that you guys don't have to hear um, the in-game music instead I can play whatever I want uh, and still keep the battle sounds, of course. And Tony is the one that helped me get Citra up and running, do everything with the, the 3DS files, converting them into, into files for Citra and everything. So huge shout outs to you guys. I'll leave the links to people who I can in the description so you guys can go and check them out. Randy, of course, is... Uh, is doing very well in uh, in the GBA thus far, so you guys are going to want to go and check him out, subscribe to him. Uh, Aaron, of course, always a huge help to the GBA analyst, and um, he's, he's just a great guy, phenomenal. And Tony's one of our Jenners, he's actually my Jenner. Uh, he's a personal friend of mine from, from back home. Uh, we see each other from, from time to time, and I, uh, I kind of got him into the GBA as a Jenner, and he's been a huge help to everybody, honestly, so huge shout-outs to those three. So... Moving on to the battle, uh, as you can see, as I predicted, um, Eren brought pretty much everything offensive on his team. <laughs> Zerkitry, Rayquaza, Megalopony, Aegislash, Mamoswine, and Kartana. So there's no Wobbuffet, of course, even though I was super scared of it, and there's no Pex, uh, there's no Gligar, and there's no Azelf either as a lead, so now I have to figure out what the hell I'm going to lead with. So. Looking at his team, uh, I decide to, uh, well, I, I look at the matchup and I decide that the most threatening offensive lead for me is Mamoswine. It's the one Mon that can really destroy five out of six of my Mons. The only Mon that it can't take care of is, of course, uh, Rotom. So we're going to uh, start the battle here. Uh, hopefully this doesn't lag too much. I think I did a good job of getting it uh, at the right quality and everything for my PC, so... Um, seems to be at zero frames per second for some reason, though. Let's hope that doesn't persist. It's going up, it's going up. Uh, hopefully I'll have this fixed by the next time uh, we do this, but everything looks okay now. So, uh, we are getting into this battle with Eren Zeng. I'm gonna send out my Rotom here as he's going to send out his Zerkatry. So. I know that I can probably take one hit from this thing, and uh, if it Z moves me right away, then so be it. I lose my Mamo check, but that's something I'm gonna have to deal with. He goes for Thunderbolt, so right away he's gonna get off a good amount of damage on me, and uh, I see that it does a respectable amount. It's obviously not specs, and I'm gonna switch out, and I should be able to take any hit with my Necrozma Dawnwing. So I'm gonna go into it, and getting rid of this Zerkatry early is gonna be very, very important for me, so I'm not even gonna bother Trick Rooming. I'm just gonna go for a Moon Guy Speed. He reveals that he is indeed Z-Move, and uh, it turns out to be uh, Gigavolt Havoc. Uh, I didn't expect any kind of wonky uh, coverage move to be his Z-Move against my Necrozma, so uh, Gigavolt Havoc does indeed come out. Uh, and I should be able to live this, and I'm going to knock out the Zerkatry with a Moon Geist Beam right after this attack connects. However, my HP drops like a rock, and Eren gets a crit. Uh, and that's going to knock out my Necrozma. And this sort of sends me on tilt right here because this Zerkatry is sitting here with a beast boost. I know it's not scarfed, 
uh, but it's uh, it, it still sort of sent me on tilt to the point where I went into my Tornadus rather than going into my faster Salamence. Uh, I went into Torn and to get off a U-turn on his Zerka Tree to put him in range of Earthquake because I had forgotten about my Volt Switch damage from Rotom. <laughs> Or Earthqu Earthquake would have de definitely knocked out this Zerka tree uh, from where it was at. He was faster than I rode him, so he had to be like max speed. And based on the damage, he also had to be max special attack on his Zerk. So uh, he definitely didn't have any bulk investment, and my Salamence would have easily been able to take this thing out. I'm now going to go into my Salamence after having lost my Rotom, uh, which is my main Mamoswine check. Now I only have like Torn. Um, Salamence, Mega Mawile, and Reuniclus, none of which really deal with Mamoswine too well. And I'm going to uh, knock out the circuitry with uh, with an Earthquake here, but I'm down to four Mons already at turn three, um, or turn four, and he uh, he's only down his his lead circuitry. Now Mamoswine's gonna come in, of course, be a huge, massive threat. I'm gonna switch on, I'm gonna go into Mawile, because if he Ice moves me, then I think I just lose to the Kartana, so... I'm gonna get off the Intimidate. He actually decides to stay in here, uh, obviously he's staying in. He's a Mamoswine versus a Salamence, but he gets up Rocks instead of going for an Ice move, so... Of course, that's going to hinder my Salamence, that's gonna hinder my... Um, my Tornadus quite a bit, both of them. And, uh, I'm just gonna opt to go for a knockoff here on this turn, I believe on his switch out to Kartana, uh, mainly because I wanted to get rid of whatever item the uh, the Mamoswine was holding. I thought maybe if I got rid of the Mamoswine uh, early enough in the game, then maybe the last three could do it against his team. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for a knockoff here on his Kartana, and I'm going to get rid of its Choice Scarf, so this is quite nice. Now, I didn't expect him to uh, to attack here. I expected him to like set up a Swords Dance or something, but he actually just goes for the Smart Strike, and it's going to do a lot of damage to my Mawile. It's going to do uh, just under half, and uh, I'm going to opt to get up my Rocks now because if his Mamoswine is Sash, I want to get rid of that Sash so that my, at least my Grass Knot can knock it out later. Now I'm going to switch out my Mawile, and I'm going to go into Salamence just to get the Intimidate drop, as he's going to probably going, go for another Smart Strike here. Uh, as I get off an Intimidate, I'm going to get off some Rocky Helmet damage on this Kartana, and uh, that's exactly what happens. Smart Strike shouldn't do more than 24.9%, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it actually does a little bit more. He must have been adamant, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm going to go for a Roost here, uh, just to save myself some health on my Salamence. He actually opts to stay in with his Kartana and weaken me further with his Smart Strike. Uh, now, it turns out that his Kartana actually did have knockoff, and he could have gotten rid of my Rocky Helmet a lot earlier, but he decides to uh, to just stay in here and keep Smart Striking. And on this final turn, he's actually going to go for knockoff as opposed to getting off more damage with Smart Strike. So, I don't really agree with that uh, series of plays uh, from Eren, but uh, to each his own. He did end up getting rid of my Helmet. Uh, not that it matters too much at this point. His team is still a massive threat. However, I did bring it back to 4-4, four four, so... Now his Mamoswine is going to come out and once again be a massive threat to me. I don't really have a response again to an... I could go Mawile, but I don't have Sucker Punch, so I'm just going to die to an Earthquake after. So I'm going to opt to stay in. Salamence did its job. It got rid of Kartana. That's what it's. That's what it came for. So I'm going to let Salamence go down. And right here, I do see the Life Orb, so I know he's Adamant Life Orb. But I also know that Tornadus can live a uh, nice shard from this range, so I'm just going to go for Grass Knot. I know he's not Rindo Berry, I know he's not Assault Vest, so I should be able to knock him out here. He's gonna go for the shard. He's gonna knock me down to like 4% or no, a little bit higher, like 12%, uh, and I'm gonna get off a of Grass Knot here on his Mamoswine, knocking it out. So we are back to three to three. So I'm trying to find my way back into this game after uh, that tilt earlier on. If I had my Rotom, I would have been able to switch it in on his Mamoswine and deal with it with Hydro Pump because he would have had to predict it coming in and knock off uh, to get rid of me. So um, that's that's really sort of uh, the the disadvantage that I had in this game was was him being able to uh, to knock out my Rotom as opposed to me just knocking out his Zerka Tree. So now he's gonna go for Fake Out on my Torn with his Lopany. Uh, I didn't really expect Fake Out. I expected like. Um, I really did expect a uh, return, but I guess he was fearing Scarf. Uh, but now I'm going to get in my Runiclus, and I'm going to go for a Trick Room. He actually stays in and clicks Return, which I was sort of surprised about, as I could just Psychic on the following turn, but uh, but that's fine. He's going to go for, uh, or the same turn, rather. He's going to go for the Return. He's going to do quite a bit of damage. Luckily, I have my Leftovers and quite a bit of defensive investment, so I'm able to tank. And now he's going to switch out, as I actually believe that I go for the Calm Mind here uh, on his switch out to Aegislash. 
if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, I do. Because I don't expect him to stay in with Lopany uh, now that I have Trick Room up. I expect him to expect a Psychic move, and that's exactly uh, what he does. He switches out to his Age Slash. And uh, I'm gonna get some more leftovers recovery. I get the second Calm Mind up. I know that I'm faster than his Aegis Slash. Now, what I could have done here was gone for another Calm Mind. Uh, the problem is that even after Calm Mind, there was a chance that he could two hit KO me after my leftovers recovery, uh, after he had gone for King's Shield. So I decided to Shadow Ball instead. I get a Spit F drop here, doesn't really matter. It's a two shot anyway on this Aegis Slash, unless it's of course leftovers, and then it kind of matters. Uh, but he's gonna switch out into his blade form and he's gonna go for a shadow ball and that is going to do uh, quite a bit of damage to my reuniclus bringing it down to 15 hp as you can see even if i had gone for another calm mind uh there was a chance that after his king's shield uh that he would have been able to, to two shot me regardless so uh, I'm gonna go for another Shadow Ball here, actually, as opposed to going for uh, a Calm Mind or anything. I guess he thought that I had Recover, and he predicted me to go for it, and that's why he stayed in uh, in Blade form. But he also didn't lose much here, because uh, basically the Trick Room has two turns left, and he still has his Fake Out in uh to come in and just click Fake Out on my Reuniclus. Uh, and uh, and then just kill it on the following turn as this is going to be the last turn of Trick Room. Fake Out is going to knock me down to 4 HP. Trick Room expires. Uh, if he had Quick Attack, he would have been able to knock me out regardless. So it wouldn't have really made a difference. But, uh, but I don't know. I don't know if he had Quick Attack or not. I didn't really check his team. Uh, he's going to go for the return and he's going to knock me out. Now, of course, I don't have Sucker Punch. There's no way that I'm going to be able to deal with the Rayquaza, but I'm at least going to try to get another kill here. Of course, Lopany is a fighting type. should be able to knock out my Mawile, but instead he goes for return. So Mawile is actually going to pick up another kill here uh, on this week, and he's going to bring me down to 13%. He gets a crit there, <laughs> which probably didn't matter, but um, considering that, the again, the Rayquaza can have the Creator Earthquake, uh, I go for the play Playwrath, I knock out his Lopany, and he goes into his Rayquaza, uh, and <laughs> the movie clicks is actually quite hilarious, because if this was his only way to hit Mawile with Rayquaza, that crit might have actually mattered. Uh, he goes for Brick Break, <laughs> and he knocks me out. If he didn't have Earthquake or V-Create on his Rayquaza set, uh, then he wasn't knocking me out with Brick Break if that return didn't crit. Uh, Dragon Ascent might have done it considering that he was Life Orb, but I don't know. Uh, I would have I would have had to calculate, which I didn't at that point. We brought it back to a 1-0 after a horrific start. That crit was huge. Uh, it was it was pretty disgusting, but it was not in in Aaron's control, of course. Uh, he felt bad about it, but uh, but I would have gotten rid of that Zerk and I would have still had my Rotom and my Necrozma around both. So eventually, once uh, once the Trick Room would have gone down. Uh, with Reuniclus, I might have been able to do something with Necrozma. It might not have ultimately ended up mattering. I think it really only mattered for the Mammoth Swine because what I would have been able to do was once his Zerkatry went out, assuming he followed the same line of play and went into either like Kartana or uh, Lopany or Mammoth Swine, if he went Mammoth Swine, I would have probably stayed in with Necrozma and just let it die so that I could get back in my Rotom. If he went either Lopany or Kartana, I would have switched into my Salamence and kept my Necrozma around as fodder later to get a free switch into my Rotom on his Mammo. So... It was, uh, it was definitely disheartening to see that happen. Uh, I would have been able to uh, also deal with the uh, with the Rayquaza uh, later on with my uh, Tornadus if it didn't have to die. Seeing that I had an Icy Wind, I would have been able to prevent it from like getting up a Dragon Dance uh, and like starting to outspeed everything. Uh, he wouldn't have been able to get up a Dragon Dance for free in front of my Torn. I would have Icy Wind to it KO'd him for sure. So uh, a few things that would have been able to happen there later in the game had I not been tilted from the fact that he crit my Necrozma. But either way, GG to Aaron. Uh, you guys are definitely going to want to go and check out his side if you haven't done so already. Go and see it and see it on his channel. Uh, see his commentary, of course. He's also a caster for Pokemon, um, for the Pokemon company in general, for like uh, regionals and worlds and whatnot. So uh, he's uh, he's got a great casting voice. So if you want to go and check out his channel, do so. Link is in the description down below. Next week, we are taking on the San Jose Sharpedos, coached by Tom, a good friend of mine, of course, another coach in the GBA. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this game. I actually have to go and record it right now. Uh, it's already played, of course, uh, by the time this video is coming out, and uh, and then I have to go and build and play Kyle for week four. So yay! This is like two weeks ahead of time that I'm telling you this. I'm, I'm recording my week two battle already, talking about a week four game. So 
Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be it, guys. Uh, the game against the uh, Sharpedos, of course, goes up tomorrow, as this uh, video is going up on Saturday night. So uh, be looking forward to that. You guys are getting back-to-back -back GBA uploads, so there is that. Uh, again, I do want to apologize for how late this video was, mainly to Aaron, but to everybody, all of my fans, uh, for, for not being able to, to get it up earlier. But from now on, we should be on time, so uh, don't worry too much about it, and uh, hopefully I can get this little lag issue fixed with, with Citra and OBS. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it, guys. Uh, thanks again for watching. Do appreciate you guys. Uh, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Go and check out all the, the links in the description down below as well, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.